college, uh, if you would have asked me what I was going to end up doing, I would never have said this, uh, being a physician, um, studying the brain. It's almost like being a detective and trying to solve a mystery. You have a very organized system and it's just trying to solve where the problem is uh, and of course then what, what are you going to do about it. I can barely tie my shoes so I was never going to be a surgeon but I think neurology fit my personality the, the best. Came to Las Vegas I think for the same reasons many people do that is the, the ability to create something to build something. I joined the School of Medicine at that point kind of developed a a group of individuals who shared my enthusiasm and um, we went to work. I can speak from the perspective of the task force on Alzheimer's disease. He's an integral member. His contributions are extraordinary and unique unto him because of his expertise uh, in research and patient care and, and patient contact. And he brings wisdom. This was an opportunity that, that comes once in a lifetime. It was an easy decision to join the Cleveland Clinic when this opened in 2009. It's been just a, a wonderful experience since. I can't imagine not having him. Because I remember what we went through before we found him. And it was good. It's one of the unique disease is where it affects family members, uh, caregivers, as much, if not more, than, than the individual themselves. And so you have to really think of it in a holistic way rather than just writing a prescription and sending them out the door. He's incredible. He sees the patient as a person, not just as a person with a disease. Over my career, our, our paradigm about how we see Alzheimer's disease has changed tremendously. Now we know the disease begins many, many years before you even have symptoms, and we have ways to detect it. Now what's exciting is there are treatments that are being um, studied, many of them here in Las Vegas at the, at the Cleveland Clinic, that may actually uh, prevent progression of the disease, and this would be a, a game changer. Chronic traumatic encephalopathy has gotten a lot of attention in the media now because of the um, tragedies that have occurred in the NFL. We don't know much about it, and again, we're very much like we were with Alzheimer's disease 30 years ago. And I see a lot of fighters, especially boxers, as they get into their later years, they start having a lot of um, problems putting their sentences together, finding specific words, and that's the, the first thing that I noticed. Uh, and that really definitely did scare me. The professional fighter study started in 2011, uh, where we actually are following professional fighters, that's boxers and mixed martial artists, on a yearly basis. So we've gone now, what, five years and have over 700 individuals in the study. To be able to get ahead of this is awesome for me. It's amazing, I feel blessed. We're really proud that even over the short time that we had the study, we have been able to translate it into a policy change. The Nevada Athletic Commission um, has, is now requiring fighters uh, for their licensure to have uh, basically a cognitive test. And this is the first time in sports that a regulatory agency is actually following brain function in their athletes over time. I've known um, Coach Burnick for three years now. He's been our cross country coach and he's taught us more than just cross country running skills but also life skills. I remember one of the things that he said that really resonated with me was that cross country and like running is one of the few things we have left that you really need to put hard work into to get better. In my field, unfortunately I don't see that many people getting a lot better uh, in dealing with uh, some of the problems that we deal with. In coaching, the whole goal is to see a person evolve. The tens of thousands of lives that he has directly or indirectly impacted, I don't want to imagine our state not having him because he is such a gift. When I volunteer at the front door, every Tuesday morning, I see people come in with smiles on their faces because they're going to see Dr. Birdie. And when they leave, they have smiles on their faces because they have seen Dr. Birdie. If I'm walking down the street or in the, or in the Smith's grocery store and somebody comes up to me and says, you know, Dr. Burnick, do you remember me? Uh, you treated my mother and, you know, we're so thankful. I mean, I think it's, it's that feeling that, that what I've done has actually had an impact on somebody's life, even if it's a disease that we know we can't cure. We know that people are going to progress, but 
But I think if in some way through the treatment we've actually made it easier for the patient and the family, then, then I think that's a success and that's what, that's what I, I think I get the most satisfaction from.